Welcome to the second part of my journey through the Prague Metro. If you haven't watched part 1, please go watch it. Please subscribe, the channel is so close to 1000 subscribers. Thank you, and without further ado, let's get to the first station, which is Lichin. Zlichin is the westernmost station of the B-Line. It is located in the Zlichin district. This station is quite similar to Letniany on the C-Line because it's built next to a field. Thankfully, the field was mostly developed into a big commercial zone, but unfortunately, this commercial zone is incredibly car-centric. Look at this map of Zlichin. And now, I'll mark all the parking lots in red. Yeah, quite a lot of parking. A housing estate was built in the district, but it's quite far from the metro station. The station is located right next to a bus terminal, with an airport line, city lines and many longer distance lines. Unfortunately, the bus stops and the field around them is littered with trash. Overall, I don't really like the surroundings of the station and the station building itself. It absolutely screams 1980s communist architecture, a solid 5 out of 10. Next up, Stodulki. The station consists of a single platform with the tracks on the outside of the platform. It is located in the Stodulki district, right underneath Yeremiashova, a major four-lane arterial road connecting the district with Lichin, the city center and the Prague Ring Road. The station serves a new office and residential development called City West on one side and an older communist era housing development on the other. The metro line is complemented by a few bus lines which stop right above the station. Overall, I don't like the fact that you have to cross the arterial road through an underpass, but the I like the station design, 6 out of 10. Next up, Luka. Luka is quite a unique station because you have to go up a staircase in order to access it. The station is single platform and located on the surface in the Luzhene district. The station is surrounded by housing, both new and old. Especially with the older communist style housing developments, we can see the individual micro districts quite well. For more information on how Soviet-style micro-districts work, check out City Beautiful's video on them, link is in the description. There are a few shopping centers located near to the station. Like Stodulki, the district is also served by a few bus lines, which stop right next to the metro station. Overall, a unique station serving quite a lot of potential passengers, 7 out of 10. Next up, Luzhine. Luzhine is a single platform metro station located a few meters below ground in the Luzhine district. The platform is decorated by a palm tree encased in its football-looking glass container. It's also filled with natural light thanks to the ceiling windows. Once you get out of the station, you emerge at the doors of a big shopping center, surrounded by many communist housing blocks. These housing blocks adhere to the micro-district development pattern, like the ones in Luka. There aren't any public transit connections next to the station. The closest one is a bus stop, about a 7-minute walk away. There isn't much to say about this station, it's pretty similar to the one before it, 6.5 out of 10. Next up, Hurka. The metro passes through an elevated tube between the stations of Luzhine and Hurka, making it quite an interesting one. Hurka is a single platform station located only a few meters below ground in the Nové Butovice district. Like Luzhine, the station features ceiling windows, filling it with natural light. The station continues the trend that the previous two ones started. It's surrounded by communist-era housing blocks with a few shopping centers sprinkled in. The district is, yet again, served by a few bus lines, but this time they're slightly farther away from the metro station. Overall, a solid and interesting station with an elevated tunnel, 7 out of 10. Next up, Nové Butovice. Nové Butovice is a single platform station located 5 meters or 16.5 feet below the surface in the Nové Butovice district. When you reach the surface, you emerge into a quite large bus terminal with numerous lines going to lots of different places. The station is surrounded by modern office parks and business centers. The biggest attraction of the station, and probably the reason behind why a lot of people go there, is the Galeria Butovice Mall. It's a large mall located next to the aforementioned Yeremiashova Road. Thankfully, it at least has a solid metro connection. Overall, with its good bus connections and proximity to office and business centers, plus a large mall, I'm giving Nové Butovice a 7 out of 10. Next up, Jinonice. Jinonice is a single platform station located on the side of a hill in the Jinonice district. When you emerge from the station, you walk out to Radlitska, a wide road connecting this district to the city center. The station serves some housing estates, an office and business park, and the Praha Jinonice train station. Like almost every other station, there are bus stops right in front of the metro station's entrance. 
The area right around the station could be built up more densely, but this is compensated by development slightly farther away. Overall, I'll give the station a 6 out of 10. Next up, Radlitska. Radlitska is, yet again, a single platform station located slightly down the hill that Inonice is on, in the Radlitsa district. The entrance is located under the aforementioned road connecting these districts to the city center. The station serves numerous office buildings around it and the SK Motorlet swimming pool. Some housing is being served by this metro station, but it's quite far away and uphill. New, dense apartment buildings are being built a 10 minute walk away from the station. The station is complemented by bus stops and a tram stop, with a line leading through the city and to its other side. Overall, a decent station, 6.5 out of 10. Up next, Smichovské nádraží. Hey, post-production Tramly here. It seems that I have lost most of the footage I took from Smichovské nádraží, and so I won't be able to show you footage from the street as well as most of the interior of the station. Sorry about that. Now, let's get back to the video. The station is located on the left bank of the Vltava River in the Smichov district, and the station serves as a transit hub for the southern parts of Prague. The transit hub consists of the metro station, a tram line, a train station and a bus terminal. After emerging from the underground, you get greeted by a lively street with lots of apartments and shops and lots of transit options. The train station is also going to get modernized soon, so I'm looking forward to that. Overall, I really like this station and its integration of different modes of transit, a great 8 out of 10. Next on our list, Angel. Angel is a single platform station located very deep underground in the Smichov district. On one side, there's the Naknijetsi bus terminal, and on the other, there's Angel, a massive pedestrian zone, shopping center, and housing district. Contrary to the popular belief of NIMBYs, pedestrianizing a shopping area doesn't kill it, it does quite the opposite. The crown jewel of the shopping district is the Novi Smichov Mall. This mall is very much alive and well, bustling with life. The Angel metro station is very well connected to other modes of transit. There's the aforementioned bus terminal, but the star of the show is the Angel tram stop, or should I say, multiple stops. Angel is the busiest tram station in the whole city, with multiple tram lines going through it. Overall, a great station, 8.5 out of 10. Up next, Karlovo Náměstí. It's a single platform station, located on the right bank of the Vltava River. If you emerge from the western exit, you walk out to Rašinovo nábreží, a riverside road and tram tracks. Right under Rašinovo nábreží, there's the Náplavka, a really nice pedestrianized embankment which hosts bars, markets and other events. If you emerge from the eastern exit, you get dumped onto Karlovo náměstí, a square with a park, a road and tram tracks going through it. The station is right in the middle of dense housing and commercial development and it's complemented with numerous tram and bus lines. Overall, a great station as well, 8 out of 10. Following Karlovo náměstí, there's Národní třída. Národní třída is a single platform station located near a street with the same name. After exiting the station, you walk out onto Spálená, a street adjacent to Národní třída. The reason why a metro station is named after a seemingly random street is this. First of all, it's a significant avenue full of 19th century buildings. But most importantly, this street was the place where the November 17, 1989 revolution began, when the communist government violently dispersed a student protest, which ultimately led to the fall of communism in Czechoslovakia. Right next to the exit, there's the Quadrio shopping center and the Národní třída tram stop. There's also a famous landmark, the rotating head of Franz Kafka. For its location right in between the old and new town and its connection to a tram line, I'm giving Národní třída an 8 out of 10. Next, there is Mustek. Mustek is a single platform transfer station for the A and B lines. It's located on the bottom of Wenceslas Square, one of the most iconic squares in Prague. If you exit through the western exit, you walk out onto Národní třída, the aforementioned avenue. If you emerge from the eastern exit, you find yourself on Wenceslas Square, a historical square full of fancy shops, apartments and a tram line running through the middle. The station is very well connected to other modes of transit, with all three metro lines within a roughly 10 minute walk and numerous tram lines. Overall, a very useful and good station, 7.5 out of 10. Next up, Náměstí Republiky. Náměstí Republiky is a single platform station located under a square of the same name. The square features landmarks such as the Municipal House, the Czech National Bank or the Powder Tower. Náměstí Republiky is also home to numerous shopping centers, such as the communist Irakotva or the larger, more modern Palladium. 
Palladium is an absolute monster with 39,000 square meters or 420,000 square feet of retail space. There's also 19,500 square meters or 210,000 square feet of office space. The mall also has direct access to the metro station, with an exit leading directly into it. The station is also connected to other modes of transit, with a bus station and tramline running directly next to it. Overall, I like this station. I like the direct access to Palladium and the numerous landmarks right next to it. 8 out of 10. Next up, Florence. Florence is a single patron transfer station for the B and C lines, located in the Florence district. After emerging from the earth, you get dumped onto a not very pleasant street owing to the massive urban freeway leading above. The streets in this district are, at least in my opinion, way wider than they need to be. Near the eastern exits, there is the UAN Florence bus terminal, which is the main hub for long distance bus lines. Except that, there are a few apartment buildings, shops and of course the iconic McDonald's under the freeway. At least the station is well connected to other modes of transit. The B and C metro lines lead through there and there are tram and bus stops. To be honest, I don't like this station. The building looks as if the phrase 1980s Soviet communism was a building and the freeway really ruins it. 5.5 out of 10. Up next, Krzyzikowa. Krzyzikowa is, gasp, shock, a single platform station located in the Karlin district. Křižíkova is named after František Křižík, a Czech inventor and engineer, with his most significant contribution being a vastly improved version of the electric tram. The station is located in the middle of two streets, with numerous shops and apartment buildings located right next to it. The metro station is complemented by a tram line running right in front of it. Overall, a decent station, 7 out of 10. Next on our list, Invalidovna. Shockingly, Invalidovna is a single platform station located in the Invalidovna district. After you emerge from the station, which isn't wheelchair accessible, even though the name Invalidovna means housing estate for disabled people, you get greeted by a street with a tramline running through it. The station is surrounded by nice, modern-looking, transit-oriented development. There are multiple apartment and office buildings near the station, and more are being built, so I believe that development around the station has a bright future. The station is a bit ugly though, but other than that, I like it. 7 out of 10. Next, Palmovka. Palmovka is a single platform station located in a district of the same name. When I was riding up the escalator, I noticed absolutely excessive creaking coming from it. After riding up to the surface, you walk out to a bus terminal, which looks like it's been frozen in time since the year 1984. If you pass through a long corridor, you can see the Hrabal Wall, named after the writer Bohumil Hrabal, who wrote the novela Ostre sledované vlaky. This novela was later adapted into an Oscar-winning movie. The station is at least well connected to numerous bus and tram lines, and the area around it is quite densely developed. Not my favorite station, but definitely not the worst, 6.5 out of 10. Next up, Česko-Moravská. Českomoravská is, shockingly, a single platform station located in the Libeny district. The biggest draw of this station is the O2 Arena, a large multi-purpose stadium. Before and after each hockey game, concert or event, the metro is absolutely jam-packed with people. Apart from the stadium, there is the Galeria Harfa shopping mall and numerous apartment buildings and ground floor stores. The metro line is flanked by two tram lines, and a bus terminal is located right next to the station. The building screams 1980s Soviet architecture, just like some of the previous ones, so I'll have to dock points for that. Overall, still a solid station, 7 out of 10. Next up, Vysočanská. Vysočanská is another single platform station, located in the Vysočany district. The station is right next to the Fanix Mall, but other than that, there's not really much to note about the surroundings, just the usual apartment buildings and shops. Vysočanská is well connected to other modes of public transit. There's a tram line going right next to the station, and there's a train station a few minutes walk away from the metro. Overall, a rock solid station, 7.5 out of 10. Next up, Kolbenova. Kolbenova is, yet again, a single platform station, located in the Vysočany district. Kolbenova is also the least utilized station on the whole Prague metro network. Unlike some of the previous stations, this station's building is very modern and aesthetically pleasing. After riding up the escalator, you find yourself on a street with grassy tram tracks. Trams are also the only mode of transit the metro station connects to. 
The surroundings of the station seem pretty barren at first sight. Except for one tall building, there isn't really that much dense development in front of the station, only a few industrial buildings, both old and new. Thankfully, this area is undergoing a massive overhaul, with lots of apartment buildings springing up around the station. Other notable buildings around the station are a PepsiCo factory and a massive Mobilix furniture store. Right now, the surroundings of the station are pretty much just a big construction site, but the district around it could become something great. 7 out of 10. Next up, Hlobetin. Hlobetin is, big shocker, a single platform station located in the Hlobetin district. After going up to the surface, you walk out onto a pretty wide road with tram tracks in the median. The station is in the middle of a commie block housing estate with a few shopping centers sprinkled in. Around the edges, there are a few lower density single and multi-family homes. The metro line connects to a tram line and numerous bus lines. Not the most notable or beautiful station, but I think it does the job well. 6.5 out of 10. Next up, Rajská zahrada. Sound the alarm, because Rajská zahrada is a double platform station! The station is also the only one to have its platforms on different floors. The platform in the direction to Černý most is on a ground floor, whereas the platform to Zličín is on the first. There's also a second floor, which houses shops. The station is located in the Černý most district. On one side of the station, there is the Prague Ring Road and some lower density single and multi-family homes, and on the other, there is the communist era housing estate and more single and multi-family homes. There's also a park and ride on the eastern end of the station. Overall, Rajská zahrada has a unique and aesthetically pleasing station design and some dense development built right around it, at least on one side. It's a shame that the Prague Ring Road runs right next to it, but still, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. And now, the final station, Černý Most. After passing through an elevated metro tunnel, I found myself at Černý Most. Sound the alarm again, because Černý Most is a double platform station. The Černý Most station is located in a district of the same name, and to be fair to it, the housing development around it is quite dense. There is also a park and ride garage right next to the station, making leaving your car at the edge of the city and taking transit the rest of the way easier. That's unfortunately where the positive stuff ends. The station looks sketchy as heck, with the feeling that if I passed through there at night, someone would definitely try to mug me. The station also returns to the trend of ugly architecture. Under the station, there is a bus terminal, which must be an absolute joy at night. Lots of shopping centers and such have sprung up around Černý most, partly due to the metro and partly due to the proximity of the Prague Ring Road. The latter unfortunately caused the developments to be pretty car-centric, with massive parking lots. Overall, are pretty poor showing compared to the other stations, 5 out of 10. Thank you so, so much for watching to the end and stay tuned for part 3, where I'll go through the C-Metro line. This has been Tramley and I'll see you next week. Bye!